Hey everybody, Andrew Connell here. Uh, this is another one of our Sprint Go Live parties, but unfortunately I doubt many people are gonna be tuning in because I didn't make it much of a party. I didn't give you much of a heads up that I was doing this. Uh, in fact, I didn't give you a heads up. So in the last few weeks, a lot of stuff has been going on, not just in the Voitano space, but also in the SharePoint framework space. And I wanted to take a minute to tell you a little bit uh, about what's going on uh, and give you an update on the class. Uh, but more importantly, also talk to you about some new content that we pushed in uh, in the course. So again, I do these go live parties uh, whenever we do a new sprint uh, release. And recently for uh, my course, Mastering the SharePoint Framework, which is targeted to developers who want to get ramped up or upgrade their skills, uh, level up their skill set with the SharePoint Framework, um, I want to talk about a handful of new content that uh, we've added to it. And that was specifically, we did that in both Sprint 14 and 15. Um, I never did one of these go lives, or I didn't do one of these go lives when we launched Sprint 14 because my anticipation or my ex expectation was that Sprint 15 would be released within a couple days and I'd be able to double them both up right away. Well, unfortunately, had some problems with uh, my with the production process. All the content was done and ready to go for Sprint 14, 15, uh, but I have someone that usually, that. I send all the audio files to, and uh, he cleans those up for me, um, does like noise cancellation, leveling, make sure there's no spikes and stuff. Makes it sound a lot better for you guys. Um, it's stuff that I could do, but I'm just not that great at it. And you don't really pay for a course on SharePoint Framework to hear me talk, to have my skills as an audio producer uh, get cleaned up. So that's why I don't spend too much time doing this. And I instead let somebody else do that for me. Well. He kind of disappeared on me for a little while. I thought he was working on the files and he disappeared on me for about a week and a half and then finally came back and did it. So long story short, I am now you know, so strongly considering uh, switching up my uh, the process that I'm using and the, the people that I'm using, trying to find some additional people. So um, right now, uh, I wanted to do this back when I, and give you a heads up when I was doing it when I got back home. Um, but I'm actually in not home right now. I'm actually in Las Vegas. Uh, and this is the third stop on a three stop uh, business trip that I'm on. Uh, last week, I was at the uh, Microsoft uh, Global MVP Summit in Redmond, uh, where we got to see a lot of stuff that was uh, planned with the SharePoint framework. I got to uh, share a lot of the feedback that you guys have had with the SharePoint framework back to Microsoft Engineering. Um, it's really cool to see the direction they're going, the openness they have, um, some plans they have going forward. Um, there's not too much stuff I would say that's like secret or NDA stuff. Um, everything, a lot of it that you guys really already know, what Microsoft has already talked about, like in the, the bi-weekly P&P calls, SharePoint Patterns and Practices calls. Um, things like, you know, they've talked about how they want to move uh, the uh, office, move the SharePoint framework to be able to have web parts be deployed as uh, Office add-ins using the Office add-in model. Like we've seen now, a SharePoint framework can be surfaced inside of Microsoft Teams. So we can see now that they're you know they're moving in that direction. Um, and like I said, there's not a whole lot more to really share with you. I mean, you're not missing a whole lot in terms of you know what did I miss that was NDA at the MVP summit. I'm not gonna. There wasn't a whole heck of a lot. It was more or less, um, but it was really valuable. And I would I'm I walked away from there feeling very a couple things. I felt very energized about the SharePoint framework and also felt very confident in the engineering team, um, their management as well in terms of the future of the SharePoint framework. Um, this thing ain't going away. I'm not going to say anytime soon, but I don't think it's going away. Uh, it is, in fact, they're just constantly leveling down, you know, you're leveling up and, and, and doubling down more and more. I mean, cliche is going to throw in there uh, about this stuff. So I think it's, it's going in a really good direction. Okay, so a couple things really quick. Let's go through and let me talk to you a little bit about the content that we had that was released in Sprint 14 and also in Sprint 15. So Sprint 14 came out at the beginning of March and that included two chapters, two brand new chapters that were added to the ultimate bundle. If you recall, the fundamentals bundle was all wrapped up at the end of Sprint 13. So in Sprint 14, what do we have? We have two chapters that we added to it. First chapter was about using dynamic data. And if, you, if, you're, if you're a SharePoint developer from the old days, like Farm Solutions, Sandbox Solutions, add-ins, you know about connected web parts and how we can have one web part be a producer sharing data with another web part that's a consumer. Um, 
So uh, that what dynamic data is, is you can think of it uh, as uh, as as this as a uh, connected web parts, but it's really like connected web parts advanced because now any component that's a SharePoint framework component can leverage dynamic data. Um, they can share data with other components that are on the page. So SharePoint framework component to component. So you can have an extension, be a provider of data to web parts on the page um, or vice versa. So that chapter shows you how to do, how to build web parts as producers, how to build um, extensions as producers, and then how to build web parts as consumers and extensions as consumers. And it even goes a little advanced too, because with web parts, you have the ability to do, um, to, to extend the property pane uh, so that you can manually or visually wire up uh, everything, um, like the, the consumer to the provider. Um, with an extension, you don't have that ability. And so I show you in that, in that, in that chapter how you can also wire an extension as a consumer to a provider uh, programmatically. So that chapter goes through all through dynamic data and gets you up to speed. That's something that's available to us in uh, SharePoint Online only. And then there's a, a short chapter that I also added on doing team-based development. So, so you got a development team of, you know, five, six, seven people. Um, you can take those, those, all those people can, I want to talk about topics about like, you know, how can you uh, work to be better together as a team? Now, there's lots of chapters. When I originally spec'd out the course, this chapter was actually really big. But the more I looked at it, I've already covered a lot of this stuff throughout the course, like versioning, deployment, um, testing, stuff like that. So this chapter ended up being a little bit shorter and just cross-referenced a lot of other existing chapters that I have in the course. Uh, so both you'll find both of those uh, in the uh, both of those chapters in the uh, ultimate bundle, and uh, they're there today. Um, then in Sprint 15, I was able to publish that uh, this past week uh, while I was at the MVP Summit. Um, there was like two sessions that were really boring to me. So I just sat there and knocked out the email and the publishing everything and turning it all live and all that. So it's all up there on the, uh, on the, on the ultimate course up on the site. There are two chapters in that uh, bundle that I shipped in that, in that, um, in Sprint 15. And the, uh, if you see me keep looking away from the camera, I'm actually, I'm currently in, in Las Vegas for another conference. Um, this one I'm attending and it's more or less about like, you know, uh, business marketing and stuff like that um, and it's just two days long so I did that on, I'm doing that on the way home from the MVP summit I'm in Las Vegas and I'm staying at a hotel I'm staying at the Tropicana right down the uh, street from the airport and if you've ever been to Las Vegas there are sirens going on all the time so we're sitting here at like 8 30 in the morning here in Vegas and it's just like non-stop you hear another siren I was actually getting ready to hit go live and then a whole triage of Ambulances and fire trucks went blazing by. So I was like, I'm going to wait till this goes by. All right. So Sprint 15, what's in that? So think of this as like extending your development uh, build pipeline. What can you do to customize it? What can you do to extend it? And I focus this on two chapters, one on Gulp and one on Webpack. So in the beginning of the course, in the starter bundle, there's a chapter that really walks through uh, all the different tooling that we use in the SharePoint framework build pipeline. But what I want to do in these two chapters really dive a lot deeper. So in the Gulp one, we look at not only what is Gulp and how is it used and, and what do you use it for, um, but then we take a, um, uh, have a lesson where we dive in and say, now how is the SharePoint framework team take, uh, uh, implementing it? And they're, they're not doing anything special. Um, it, it's nothing like they've you know, gone off the rails and they're doing something really dramatically different. It's just that they've made it very, very clean uh, so that when we use Gulp, we don't have to do any configuration with it. All of it's already set up for us for a SharePoint framework project, which is very nice and very useful. Now, the other thing that um, uh, this chapter does is it goes and tells you how you can take advantage of Gulp and cut and do some customizations uh, for your uh, for your project. Uh, and what I show there is how you can create your own custom tasks, how you can log messages to the console and do it in the way that, that Microsoft is doing it. Uh, and then uh, I also show you how you can, um, uh, how to create your own custom tasks. So you can add your own tasks to Gulp and how you can even have these tasks get wired up into certain parts of the pipeline so that they'll run automatically. So like before the build starts, after the build starts, um, before TypeScript uh, compilation is run, after TypeScript, et cetera. And then also how to create your own uh, your own tasks. 
And so when you do, when you, the way I show you how to do that with your own task is that the scenario we use is how to take um, source maps. And by default, when you do a production build, uh, two things don't happen. Uh, number one, the production build does not does not generate. And number two, there's no source maps there, so they're not included in the build. There's a school of thought that says you should always deploy source maps, even in production, because what that allow you to do is that if you ever have a, a production problem, you'll be able to read oh, read the the um, uh, go to your pub, your published website and set a breakpoint using the developer tools in the browser and be able to see the underlying source TypeScript that you that that you want to make a change to or where the source actually happened. So in the Webpack chapter, we deal with how to turn on uh, source maps when you do a build. But in the um, Gulp chapter, I show you how to not only once those source maps are generated, how do I then take those source maps and include them into my package, uh, the SharePoint package file, so that when I deploy my SharePoint package to my SharePoint environment, be that Office 365 and SharePoint Online, and so everything goes into the Office 365 CDN, or if you do it on-prem and you deploy stuff uh, manually. Uh, I make I show you how all of those things can be added to, the, the source maps can be added to your JavaScript, uh, the same location where your JavaScript bundle goes, so that when you do a, you know, open up your dev tools in the browser and set a breakpoint on a JavaScript file, you will see, you'll get mapped to the underlying TypeScript. So I show you how to create a pack, a, a pack, a task that does that, um, which is very easy. Once you understand it, it's pretty easy, at least. Uh, the code for doing it is pretty is pretty complicated, uh, especially for that specific task, because you got to we crack open a whole bunch of stuff. Like we work with a, a zip file uh, in memory and add files, and then read and write files to an office uh, or sorry, open XML format uh, or open packaging convention. I think is what it's called. Um, but like the XML format of, of, a, of a, uh, a zip file, the package that like Office documents use, that's what we use in the SharePoint and SharePoint packages. So that chapter is there for you in Sprint 15. And another chapter that I've created is about Webpack. And so following the same kind of model that the, job, that the, that the Gulp uh, project or the Gulp chapter followed, I start with a deeper explanation of what is Webpack and how it works. And then how the SharePoint framework implements Webpack and leverages it. And again, they don't do anything special because they do a lot of stuff for us. It's really advantageous. Um, it's what makes it really easy to use the way that they've defined it. But what I then want to show you how to do is how you can then customize or influence and configure uh, Webpack for your, for your use. And so one thing I show you how to do is how you can go in and modify different settings. Um, I show you, we have a demo in there that shows using different loaders. Uh, and so let's say you have some content that you want to show in your web part. You can, instead of authoring that content in HTML, maybe you're like me and you prefer to use Markdown over, over um, uh, HTML. And so I show you how you can use Markdown and then just in your TypeScript, you're just going to import the Markdown file and treat it like a string and then write out the, the results uh, right into your, your web part. But then you go into Webpack and you configure Webpack to say, hey, whenever you come across a markdown file, convert it to HTML and then just use the HTML in the bundle. So I get a great development experience time. I don't have to work with HTML. And on the other side, it gets we get a nice string that's going to get embedded in my bundle, not a, and I don't have to deal with the loading of another file. So that's a cool way you can, you, can influence, you can use Webpack to influence stuff. I also show you how to use Webpack, configure Webpack to change the production build to say, whenever you do a production build, I want you to generate source maps. So I should, that's another demo that we show you how to do. And then, so and that, that involves changing multiple, um, uh, changing, changing the configuration for Webpack uh, to do things like, um, uh, you, you change the, the Uglify JS uh, plugin to make sure he knows that to take that into account when he generates the manifests or in the bundles, uh, when he, not the manifest, the bundles and the, the source maps. And then uh, you also tell uh, Webpack itself that you will be doing source maps because they're disabled in production. And then finally, I show you how to use some, how to use the plugin model. In the plugin model, we do three different things. I show you how to use the out-of-the-box plugin uh, called the banner plugin, which adds some uh, a comment to the top of your bundle, uh, which is great for if you have a, your, your organization is regulated, and you need to be able to add a copyright to the top of the bundle, like a, 
uh, maybe some legalese and stuff up there. Um, I like to do that by adding a version number up there for my package, but I actually don't use that bundle to do it. Instead, I show you how to go get a third party bundle called the Webpack Auto Inject version. And what it does is it looks at the package.json file inside my project. And whenever it generates a bundle, it writes the version number and the timestamp of when it was built to the top. So now when I'm in production, if there's a problem, I can always easily verify which bundle's being used in the version of it by just viewing source of the bundle, looking at the top, that top line, and it says, hey, you're 1.2.3, generated on March 24th at 8.41 a.m., right? So it's, it makes it really easy to see that stuff, and all that's done automatically. And then the last one we do is we do a plugin using something called um, the Webpack Bundle Analyzer. And in the course, you see me use an NPM tool called uh, Source Map Explorer. And what uh, that does is it just looks at your bundle and says, here's what's in it, here's how big it is, stuff like that. Um, the last one, what I do with this one now is that now whenever I do a build, it always generates a statistics package that I could open up in a browser and that's gonna show me um, my bundle and be able to inspect it if it's gzipped or not gzipped and all these different compression things. So I can see what's in the bundle and have a better uh, visibility into what's in there before I end up you know, adding a whole bunch of others, before I end up pushing it into production. So that's what's been included in the last uh, two button in the last two um, uh, sprints that we've that we've uh, pushed out sprints 14 and 15 four new chapters all of them are in the ultimate bundle. Uh, I've already started uh, working on uh, sprint 16. Uh, don't have an ETA for that. Kind of want to get home and kind of get settled again and get you know unpack and make sure I have look at my schedules and make sure that everything is I can commit to real dates here. Uh, but everything is looking good uh, for the content. So Sprint 16 is going to have, I think, one or two new chapters, and it's, gonna, and it's also going to have um, an, like an update to one or two chapters. Uh, so I'm specifically going to be looking at things for, that, have been, that are adding things to SharePoint that are, or to, my, to the Ultimate Bundle, that are related to like, some of the recent things that have been, that have been published. So like app only pages, or sorry, app, app pages, um, isolated, uh, the isolated uh, web parts. That's gonna be in like an update to the deployment chapter, um, stuff like that. So I don't wanna commit too much to what you're gonna see in Sprint 16. I mean, it's gonna, I will, uh, if you're interested, um, stay tuned, I'll update the, the, I'll let you know via our, um, uh, Facebook page, <laughs> there it is. I'll update you via our Facebook page and on Twitter uh, what the actual plans are gonna be and you know what I'm looking at in terms of dates and stuff like that. But I expect it to be like in the next, like in the next, um, let's see, probably in the next three weeks. So I'm, I'm here in Vegas here for the next few weeks. Uh, for the next weeks, I uh, hope not. I'm here in Vegas just for the next, for through the end of this week. So I won't really get to start working on it for two weeks. And then, like I said before, I want to find another audio person to help me out with some stuff to get, have a better turnaround time than what I've been dealing with. Um, and I think that's just about it. So if, if you want, if you're watching this today, uh, you also know that the, uh, or if you're watching the, what is this? March the 24th, Sunday, March the 24th. Um, you also know that SharePoint framework version 1.8 was released about two weeks ago. Uh, you should, you will see a blog post on the Boitanos blog coming very, very soon, hopefully tomorrow. <laughs> um, that is uh, going to be another one of our teardowns. So what's in there, what's changed, what's updated. There's actually something that's got deprecated, stuff like that. So um, we'll have all that stuff in the, um, uh, in this, uh, in, in a blog post that comes out uh, hopefully very soon. I'm still, I've got a bunch of stuff that's already written for it. I'm just adding a bunch of, just testing a few things and making sure that, some stuff is still there. So you've seen the release notes, potentially, you maybe seen other people talk about it on the blogs. Um, I just wanted to make sure that I had a, um, I have one of our traditional posts that kind of tears it down so you can get a, and get a view of what's in there. And that's about it. So if you got any questions, again, feel free to post them. Um, if you're watching the recorded version of this, please, please feel free to post the questions. Um, on the uh, in the comments, uh, the video we're also going to post this video to YouTube uh, and link to it in a blog post on the Boitanos blog. So if you're if you're watching this on um, YouTube, go to, look at the link at the bottom. Go to the, the Facebook page um, that has this uh, this this live post. 
put your comments there. It's easier to kind of keep all the discussion in just one spot. Um, if you would, I would appreciate it at least. Uh, and, uh, and yeah, that's about it. So with that, hope everybody has a great week. Hope to hear from you. And I'll talk to you soon. Bye. Notice that was my VESA. Bye.